Welcome to chapter 15, the letter to the Colossians. Now, Pauline authorship was not seriously questioned, uh, really until the 19th century. Very few questioned the authenticity of Pauline authorship before Boltmann and others between World War I and World War II. Now, there are a number of arguments about authenticity. Uh, some are from the standpoint of language. Hapax legomenon, that is, words used only once, are present in the letter. So, some would say, because you have this rare usage of certain key vocabulary, then Paul couldn't have written it. But, Hapax are also present to a great degree in all of the Pauline letters. So there's no reason why Paul couldn't have written it based upon Hapax. The style may be different than the undisputed Paulines, as some would argue. It couldn't be Pauline because the stylistic elements are different. But Colossians also exhibits several stylistic features that are found elsewhere in Paul. Another argument is based on theology. There's an absence of the important Pauline concepts of justification, law, salvation. But, contra to that, this also occurs in other epistles that his authorship is not questioned. So there's no reason that Paul should write about the same topics every time he writes a letter. Some would argue that there is a development of unpauline concepts. In other words, the ecclesiology and Christology are too highly developed, which occurs over time as these concepts and these doctrines tend to develop. For example, they argue Christ's headship over the church, that that's a development, that the church is Christ's body and the cosmic portrayal of Christ. Well, this development is real to be sure, but not in any way divorced from Paul's discussions in other writings where he talks about some of these things. For example, in the Christus Psalm, this highly developed Christology, and yet the Philippian letter is early and not disputed to be Pauline, and yet that that Christology is beautiful in chapter 2, so it pretty much unravels this argument against Pauline authorship. Another theological point that the opponents of Pauline authorship make is that there's presence of unpauline concepts in eschatology. They try to find a realized eschatology, which means a belief that the second coming, the, the eschatolo eschatological um, time has already been realized, that is, is here, but uh, Carson and Moo argue that Colossians retains a very deep sense of inaugurated eschatology, that is, believers' lives are hid in Christ in order to be revealed on the last day, so the the eschaton has been inaugurated, it's been started, but it's not yet consummated. Another one is that it's too similar, the letter of Colossians too similar to Ephesians. But hey, why shouldn't an author write similar things to two different churches? <clears throat> Some would say it's pseudonymous. But why address to the town of Colossae if you're writing pseudonymously? There are a number of links with the letter to Philemon, which is undoubtedly Pauline. Okay, so we're going to argue for Pauline authorship here. What about where the letter was written? All right, well, you have the big three. We've talked about these before. We know Paul was in jail in Ephesus, Caesarea, and Rome. So let's look at each of these briefly. 
the argument that he's in Ephesus. Well, Paul asks for a room to be prepared for him to the Colossians, but if he's if he's uh, uh, close by, this would make sense, okay? Because he knows he's coming, maybe in a few days, so get his room ready. Requesting a guest room would be premature if he's in Rome because he doesn't know when he's going to get there. It's going to take him a while to get there by ship and so forth. Um, another argument for Ephesus would be that Onesimus would have been able to find Paul easier in Ephesus than in Rome. But against the Ephesian imprisonment, Luke and Mark are both with Paul. Read that there in chapter 4, 10, and 14. They're mentioned in his, in his final greeting. And Acts 15 does not have uh, Luke and Mark there until, um, until after the we sections, when Paul visited Ephesus. Okay? All right. Um, Onesimus may have preferred to run as far away as possible, and Ephesus would have been very close to where he would have run from if he were leaving Colossae. So if Ephesians was written at the same time, then why would he write a letter to the city that he was in? Okay? So, there are some big question marks about Ephesus. How about Caesarea? Well, it's unlikely that Onesimus would have fled east from, uh, from um, um, Colossae to go to Caesarea. Paul's request for lodging would be unlikely uh, if he were in Caesarea, since his only hope of release from that jail was to go to Rome, okay? So, Caesarea seems unlikely. Now, Rome is a stronger contender. Paul's plan was to go west towards Spain after Rome and not back to Colossae, okay? But it is possible he may have abandoned his plan but the pastoral seemed to indicate that uh, that he, uh, some would say he did deviate from his plan. Now Lightfoot would argue, no, um, he went on to Spain and he's writing back to Timothy and Titus in those, those letters. Uh, overall, Rome seems to have a little more strength, but uh, Carson Moose say not by much. So, when did he write? It If he was in Rome, it would be the early 60s, and if he is um, not in Rome, it'd be late 50s, okay? All right, what's the occasion for writing this uh this letter. Well, he's dealing with false teaching. Uh, he seems to be a bit detracted from high Christology. Uh, one had to go beyond Christ to attain spiritual maturity. Uh, so these false teachers were saying Christ was a created being according to false teachings and there's a syncretistic Hellenistic slash Jewish kind of philosophy. So who are these false teachers? Are they Gnostics? Are they Jews? Well, the problem is there are no known teachers who combined all the features that Paul's addressing here. Paul emphasizes the supremacy of Christ over these opponents who are trying to detract from the supremacy of Christ. Um, Christ is overall earthly and heavenly. He's emphasizing Christ as the head of the church. The church is his body. He's emphasizing reconciliation. 
and expressing love and tenderness toward the believers that he had never met. All right, well, enjoy reading the book of Colossians, and this will give you a little introduction to some of these uh, critical issues. So enjoy your time in the book.